Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Nintendo Switch emulation, covering the differences in performance and the usability of both Yuzu and Ryujinx emulators. Before making this video, I asked you guys what games you would like me to test, so for this video, we're going to be taking a look at 8 titles, those being Super Mario Odyssey, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Pokemon Sword, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and finally, Astral Chain. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't posted a video in the last week or so. The reason for that is that this video just took up so much of my time, both in getting all of the documentation for all of the correct settings, and then doing all of the capture and editing of the video itself. The format of this video is pretty straightforward. What I've done is I've recorded the performance of all 8 games tested on my two systems, one being my lower end system containing an i5 4690K, that's a 4 core Haswell CPU that's clocked at 4.2 GHz. Then I've also done the same performance comparison testing on my main system, which as many of you know contains an i7 8700K clocked at 4.7 GHz. The GPU used for all testing in this video was my GTX 1080 Ti. While I was going to use my 1060 in the lower end system, I realized at the start of my testing that there was pretty much no performance difference between the 1060 and 1080 Ti for either of these emulators, so for that reason and to speed up the process of getting the benchmarking done, the 1080 Ti was used for everything. Okay, so to kick things off, we're going to take a look at the performance differences between these emulators, then after that, I'm going to go over my own personal pros and cons for both Yuzu and Ryujinx. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave it a thumbs up down below. For now, let's kick things off by taking a look at Animal Crossing New Horizons. So the format is pretty clear as you can see, we have Ryujinx on the left and Yuzu on the right. On the left hand side of our screen we have the lower end system containing the 4690K and on the right we have my higher end system containing my i7 8700K. For both systems it seems fairly apparent that the performance is much better on Yuzu emulator but it should be noted that on Yuzu you are required to use a disable depth of field mod to get it to render as well as you are currently seeing. This mod can be easily installed, so at least in my own opinion, it's not too much of an issue. However, it's something I wanted to note considering this mod is not a requirement on Ryujinx. Let's move swiftly along, taking a look at our next game, Super Mario Odyssey. Now, something I want to note for the majority of these benchmarks is the fact that if a game runs at under its target frame rate, for example, in Super Mario Odyssey, since it is a native 60 frames per second game, if the game is running at 30 frames per second, it's going to run at half speed. In order to show you guys a proper side-by-side -side performance comparison from area to area and from emulator to emulator, what I've done is I've synchronized the video feeds so that even if a game should be running at a slower speed, it is being sped up so it matches the exact same concurrent area with all of the other game footage. In relation to Super Mario Odyssey and its playability, it's pretty obvious that at least in relation to rendering and performance, Yuzu Emulator is by far the best option. Let's keep the ball rolling and take a look at our next title, Pokemon Sword. Again, as with Animal Crossing New Horizons and Super Mario Odyssey, all gameplay footage is synchronized, and since for Yuzu and Ryujinx on my 8700K I am using a 60 frames per second mod, this is the reason the game is running at double speed. I mostly use this 60fps mod for benchmarking and testing performance levels, again in Pokemon Sword even more so than in Super Mario Odyssey, the best option for playing this game is Yuzu. Okay, so let's move along to our next title once again, this time let's swap on over to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Now, as should be apparent straight away, there is quite a difference in render quality between Ryujinx and Yuzu when utilizing the Vulcan API on The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, this title is practically perfectly rendered on Yuzu. On top of that, we also get pretty significantly better performance. For the most part, I was getting better performance on Yuzu with my 4690K than I was getting on Ryujinx with the much, much more powerful 8700K. 
Graphics and performance aside, it was a much more pleasurable experience with Link's Awakening on Yuzu since it was much, much smoother to play, and on top of this, thanks to using Vulcan, shader compilation was practically not an issue at all. Now that we've taken a look at Link's Awakening, let's move on to our next title, Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Now, before I talk about anything, there's just something I want to get out of the way. Even though this game runs super, super well on Ryujinx, both on the lower end and high end system, I have to say that this title is absolutely not playable, or at least what I would call not repeatably playable on this emulator. The reason I say this is that at least at time of making this video, Ryujinx emulator does not have a disc shader cache, something that I personally just cannot play this game without. Having to cache literally thousands and thousands of shaders almost every single time you reboot your computer just makes this game an unplayably stuttery mess and even though if you wait about 10 or 15 minutes for all of the shaders to cache, this process is going to have to be repeated time and time again every single time you reboot your computer at least until they finally add a disk shader cache. While for other games like Pokemon Sword and Shield or Super Mario Odyssey it is a massive annoyance not having this disc shader cache, for the most part it doesn't make those games unplayable due to the nature of them, however for a game like Super Smash Bros Ultimate it literally makes the game completely unplayable at all. Due to the fact that Yuzu Emulator has had a disc shader cache for a very long time, and on top of that the fact that it both renders and performs much better, I would have to say that Super Smash Bros Ultimate is far, far more playable there. Moving swiftly along once again, let's take a look at our next title, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. On the surface of things, this game may not seem like an interesting comparison, especially so when you look at the performance metrics. For the most part, on both CPUs and emulators, this game runs at pretty much a locked 60 frames per second, however, when we remember that Ryujinx emulator has a built-in internal resolution scaler, allowing you to play this game at 2, 3 or 4 times the native resolution, this puts into perspective the kind of differences you can expect between these two emulators. Now if you checked out my video covering Ryujinx's resolution scaler when it released, you would already know that it pretty much doesn't affect performance at all, so if you want to play your game at 2 times resolution, that being a 4K resolution of this game natively, you can do so with practically the exact same performance as you're seeing on screen right now. If you can deal with the shader related stutter that you experience for the first few minutes of gameplay, and if scaling resolution is something that really interests you for emulators, then Ryujinx is the emulator for you. Otherwise, if you just want a disc shader cache, no stutters in gameplay, and the game to just be playable, then you should definitely consider using Yuzu. Our second to last game is yet another very popular one. Let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Due to reasons relating to the performance of this game on the lower end system, I just didn't want to include it since it is in no way playable on the 4690K. As you can very clearly see though, it is running at full speed practically at all times on Yuzu emulator. Unfortunately, due to emulator optimization issues, it's not yet running full speed on Ryujinx, however, they are working on a range tracking PR which dramatically increases the speed of this title, so that is definitely something to look forward to in future. Ryujinx itself does have another strange bug relating to Breath of the Wild. For some reason, this game only runs at full speed when at 20 frames per second. Any frame rates higher than this will result in sped up and broken gameplay. Hopefully, once once they fully stabilize the range tracking PR and get it merged, on top of fixing the strange issue relating to the 20 frames per second cap, this game will be awesomely playable at full speed on yet another emulator. For now, let's move on to our final game, Astral Chain. In order to properly benchmark this game, and since it runs at or close to a locked 30 on both emulators, I am using a 60 frames per second mod. At the time of making this video, stability wise, this game seems to be much, much better on Ryujinx emulator, and on top of this, as you can see, the performance levels between both emulators is very, very close. Another thing worth noting is that on Ryujinx, this game is rendered much, much better. On Yuzu currently, it has a lot of texture issues, on top of a few smaller problems like this broken death animation you can see on screen. 
Pairing the stability, the rendering and the fact that Reusinx supports resolution scaling, this emulator, at least right now, is definitely the most optimal place to play this game. Now, while you may see some of the criticisms I've made throughout this video as possibly unfair or harsh, and while that may be partially true, I believe that in a review like this where I'm trying to tell you, the user, which emulator you should be using for your favourite games, it's very important that I put all the information on the table and let you know exactly what I think of each emulator. Finally, what I'm going to be doing is laying on the table each of my pros and cons for both emulators. Let's start things off with Ryujinx looking at what I believe are the pros of this emulator. First up, we have the fact that it is very easy to set up and use. This is both in respect to how the emulator works and also how you get it set up from start to finish if you've never used it before. The next thing is that Ryujinx has a native resolution scaler, as I pointed out throughout the video, if you want to play your games at much higher resolutions, this is already currently possible. Ryujinx also has experimental support for the playback of NVDEC encoded videos. This means that for games like Fire Emblem The Three Houses that has a large reliance on video playback, those are going to be rendered on this emulator. For cons, I've covered most of them throughout this video, but they are mainly the fact that this emulator currently does not have a disc shader cache. This is, for a lot of people, going to be a stopping point and the reason that they do not use this emulator, since most people are just not willing to put up with constant stutter in gameplay. Another thing that I believe is a major con is the fact that, at least the very first time you boot a game as a new user, it is going to take a very long time to actually get in-game, render graphics, and run at a playable performance level. This issue has been partially alleviated thanks to the implementation of Ryujinx's PPTC cache, this greatly speeds up the speed at which games boot, but unfortunately, as I said, for a new user to the emulator, this is still going to be a big issue. Moving on to the pros and cons of Yuzu Emulator, let's once again start with the pros. This emulator has a lot of advanced settings that allow you to get much better performance and shader building and caching speeds. Games load and run super, super fast almost immediately. This emulator has experimental support for the Vulkan API, allowing NVIDIA, AMD and Intel GPU users to have a much, much more performant experience. This emulator has had a disk shader cache for its OpenGL API for a very, very long time. This disk shader cache is literally a night and day difference. As I pointed out throughout the video, not having a disk shader cache makes several games, like for example Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Nyan unplayable. And finally, this emulator also has per game settings, allowing for even greater user customization. This feature comes in very handy since as I pointed out throughout the video, some games perform better on OpenGL, while others like The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening perform much better on Vulcan. For the cons of Yuzu, it kind of stretches back to one of the pros I previously mentioned. Yuzu has a lot of advanced GPU settings especially, and while they are very, very useful for getting the best possible stability, shader caching speeds, and also performance, it can be a little bit daunting or confusing for a new user. While I wouldn't say that Yuzu is difficult to set up, I would say that it is more difficult to set up than Ryujinx, so for that reason I'm going to be listing this as a con. Yuzu also currently does not have support for resolution scaling. This means that you're not going to be able to play your games at higher resolutions. Yuzu also currently requires users to allocate a large page file for the best possible game stability. This is definitely a con considering that Windows and Linux usually do not have a large swap or page files, meaning that users need to manually apply these themselves for, as I said, better game stability. And finally, the last con for Yuzu is the fact that it is, at the moment, completely lacking support for NVDEC video decoding. This means that for any games that require it, they simply will not work, instead being rendered as a black screen with audio playback. So there you have it guys, all of the performance and rendering differences between Yuzu and Ryujinx, at least in some of the most popular games, on top of my own personal pros and cons for the usage of both emulators. As usual, throughout the development of both of these, I will keep you as up to date as possible once anything changes, so if Nintendo Switch emulation is something that greatly interests you, please consider subscribing to my channel to see all future updates in relation. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Once again guys, thank you all very much for checking it out, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, 
dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.